Hey guys, so what we're going over is August 3rd Triller event in Madison Square Garden. Now, the reason I'm fired up about this is because of the fight I'm gonna go over, and that's Chris Algieri versus Mikel Lespierre. Now, both of these guys have a very similar record and really come to fight. So, the main thing is, the reason I wanna go over this is Algieri's back, I'm back with a vengeance, that guy. Now, a lot of times people come back from a layoff, and Chris hasn't fought in a little over two years, okay? So that's a lot of time to take off. But most people, what they don't know, that guy's training every single day. Now, this I know for a fact. If he's not doing, and he's doing road work, he's doing mitts, he's doing the bag. Like that guy, religiously, when he gets in the gym, we're talking 20, 30 minutes on the rope, 20, 30 minutes shadow boxing, and then he starts his whole thing. So there's no like skipping anything. Like a true boxer, that's what he is. <laughs> So essentially, here's how the fight breaks down between Chris Algieri and Mikel Lespierre. Okay, the beginning of the bout, it was a 10 round fight. Mikel more or less comes out more aggressive. I, I'm always saying front foot, back foot heavy. Mikel is more definitely a front foot heavy boxer and Algieri's that back foot setting traps and beating you and making you pay for it kind of guy. So, Mikel comes out round one of the fight, takes the advantage front foot heavy on Chris, all right? so. It kind of goes back and forth, give and take. Chris is making angles. If this sounds a little bit one, one sided, one biased, or I'm, that I'm biased, it's one because I am. And two, the judges also see it the same way. So if it comes off that way, then don't know what to tell you. This is how the fight game goes. Now, like I say, Chris's footwork is on point. Like just because he's had two years off from being inside the ring, doesn't mean he was sitting on his ass. That guy trains like nobody's business. Like he's got a title fight at the end of every month. He's putting in the work like nobody's business. Mikel obviously has been putting in the work. He's been fighting more, he's more active than Chris has been. So like I said, round one, Mikel jumps, tries to jump on Chris, they're moving. They, they had good exchanges throughout the whole round, okay? So whether one, two, three, four, a little bit of that, Chris is making more points, obviously, and landing some good right hands, by the way, coming through. I believe it was round four, round five, Mikel ends up cracking uh, Algeri, and after that round, Chris is like, oh, okay, you, you punched me with that one. So they go back and forth to it. Now, round nine, it could, well, it could have been either way. The ref could have stopped it in Chris's favor, but didn't, so, okay. And then round 10, Chris took it off a little bit, and that's where the three, there's three judges. Two of the three gave Chris all 10 rounds, and one of the judges gave Chris nine rounds with that last round going to Mikel. So like I said, Rich, uh, Chris tried to take it off a little bit and was just doing his thing, and Mikel got, you know, trying to get some momentum going, but it was definitely no way he's gonna put the beating on Chris or knock him out, so it was a little too late. Now, in the near future, you're gonna see Chris, that was an exceptional fight for him. You're going to see some bigger fights come up and possibly in maybe two, three fights, a title shot. So he's on point right now and there's some definitely big fights to be made with that guy. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you've got more stories about the fight, please let us know. But for right now, if you didn't know, now you know. So which video do you wanna watch? You wanna watch that video? You wanna watch that video? You know, that one's really good. But on the other hand, that one helps the video you just saw.